Hi, my name is Yun Wu. I am a postdoctoral fellow in the Department of Kinesiology at the University of Connecticut in Storrs, Connecticut. In this video, I will be overviewing the major findings from our meta-analysis titled Taiji Chuan as Antihypertensive Lifestyle Therapy, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. And this paper will appear in the Journal of Sport and Health Science. As you can see, we used the term Tai Chi Chuan instead of Tai Chi, which is a more commonly used term in English literature. To reflect the fact, our study reveals the health benefits of an ancient exercise modality rather than a philosophical concept. First, I would like to acknowledge the co-authors on this paper, Dr. Blair Johnson, Jill Livingston, and Dr. Linda Pascotello from the University of Connecticut. Shi Qi Chen from the University of Michigan, and Yi Yang Chen from Shanghai University of Sport. Of note, because the majority of the Tai Chi Chen trials were published before the 2017 American College of Cardiology and American Heart Association's definition of hypertension, we followed the seventh report of the Joint National Committee classification of blood pressure. The take-home message of our study is that, among individuals with hypertension, practicing Tai Chi Chuan can result in blood pressure reductions as large as 10 over 4 mm mercury and 19 over 9 mm mercury, based on trials published in English and Chinese language journals respectively. Very briefly, we have identified 31 Tai Chi Chuan trials, which included about 3,200 subjects published between 1997 and 2018 that compared a Tai Chi Chuan intervention group to a non-exercise, non-diet control group. And because the blood pressure response for Tai Chi Chuan in any given intervention study may be influenced by multiple factors simultaneously, we performed a meta-regression analysis, which is similar to the concept of multivariate regression analysis to identify sample study and Tai Chi Chuan exercise characteristics that independently influenced the blood pressure response to Tai Chi Chuan at the same time. And these characteristics are referred as moderators. In our meta-analysis, we have identified two main moderators. First, for both systolic and diastolic blood pressure, we found that the greatest blood pressure reductions were reported among samples with hypertension followed by samples with prehypertension and normal blood pressure. And then for both systolic and diastolic blood pressure, greater blood pressure reductions were reported among Tai Chi Chuan trials published in Chinese language journals compared to two trials published in English language journals. So putting the moderators together, we have estimated what is the greatest potential blood pressure reduction from practicing Tai Chi Chuan and we found that, among individuals with hypertension and based on Chinese language journals, the blood pressure reductions from practicing Tai Chi Chuan can be as large as 19 over 9 mm mercury. Meanwhile, based on trials published in English language journals, the blood pressure reductions can be large as, large, as large as 10 over 4 mm mercury. And these results have two indications. First, at this moment, it is probably not appropriate for us to combine Tai Chi Chuan trials published in Chinese and English language journals to represent the antihypertensive effects of Tai Chi Chuan. And second, it is imperative for us to investigate what are the factors that contributed into this large discrepancy between the two bodies of literature. And that's exactly what we did. We have compared all the study, sample, and Tai Chi Chuan exercise intervention characteristics that we can possibly quantitatively compare, and these are the differences that we have found. First, we found that the resting diastolic blood pressure of samples among Tai Chi Chuan trials published in Chinese language journals were significantly higher compared to trials published in English language journals. And second, the methodological study quality 
of Tai Chi Chuan trials published in Chinese language journals was significantly poor comparing to trials published in English language journals. And then the next two items, the standard error of the systolic and diastolic blood pressure responses to Tai Chi Chuan, which represents the publication bias in relation to the systolic and diastolic blood pressure benefits of Tai Chi Chuan, were both more noticeable among Tai Chi Chuan trials published in Chinese language journals compared to those published in English language journals. And the difference was significant in relation to systolic blood pressure and trending for diastolic blood pressure. And based on these differences, we concluded that more confidence should be placed in the Tai Chi Chuan trials published in English language journals at this moment. However, we also acknowledge that there were several potential moderators of the blood pressure response to Tai Chi Chuan that we could not quantitatively compare between these two bodies of literature because they were poorly reported in the literature. For example, the teaching skills of the instructors and the people's expectations and beliefs of the health benefits of Tai Chi Chuan. Overall, our study support that Tai Chi Chuan can be used as an alternative antihypertensive lifestyle therapy to aerobic and resistance exercise practiced either independently or in combination, especially for those who will not or cannot perform aerobic or resistance exercise for various reasons. Because even based on the more conservative estimation based on English literature, the 10 over 4 mm mercury of blood pressure reductions can still result in up to 40% reductions in the risk of cardiovascular disease.